Oh, okay. All right, so welcome to the second episode of People Don't Like Us, uh, <laughs> featuring my friend, Terrence Hall Stevenson. Welcome to the show, and thank you for being here in support of and as a guest to the show. Um, you go ahead and take the floor. I mean, we're going to talk about racial tensions today, and I'd like Terrence to share his story, and then I'll share my story, and we'll go from there. So. Oh, boy. Where to start, man? Um, <laughs> like my life story? Like, um, Well, I would say focus on where race plays into it you know okay that's that's fair like um, uh maybe from the first time that you were ever told you know you gotta act a certain way of, you know or so whatever it was that kind of keyed so, you into okay. racial issues all right so i grew up in jersey um uh most people most people know Shit, that yeah. Even I didn't remember that. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in Jersey, and it was a, a heavy emphasis on, you know, making sure you act a certain way, you know, outside the house and making sure uh, you represented yourself and your family um, accordingly when you stepped out the house. But one of the cool things about where I grew up in New Jersey was that there was there was so many different types of people. You know, you had, you, you didn't have white, black, you know, Hispanic, like it is where we live at now, right? Um, in Jersey, you know, you had you had Haitians, you had Puerto Ricans, you had, you know, all these different, um, all these different types of people. So, um, racism really wasn't something I experienced a whole lot of. Fortunately, growing up at that time in Jersey, I can honestly say that. Um, being a kid, it wasn't anything I even thought about other than what my parents were teaching me at home about, you know, making sure I understood, you know, my history being black. Right, right. It, but it wasn't something I was experiencing until uh, we moved to Virginia. Okay. Right? And how old so, were you when you moved to Virginia? Uh, 14, 15. Oh, so I met you like just yeah, after you moved yeah. to. Yeah, you, you were one of my first friends, man. Really? <laughs> I, tell, I tell everybody, I, I, I'm not afraid to, to say, the the nerds <laughs> the the white nerds were my first friends <laughs> right. and, yeah, i don't care what anybody says like i i mean you know me man <laughs> like and i never changed I, i'm never you know it is what it is they were my right first friends. um man that's crazy yeah. i really never knew that i never yeah. knew that you were so fresh to the neighborhood and all that yeah, i was actually did. thinking about it earlier we didn't even meet until my sophomore year yeah and yeah. so that would explain why I didn't know you as a freshman. I, I, yeah, my, my freshman Jersey year, there. my freshman year actually was really bad, man. I got bullied a lot. I didn't know anyone. I still, my accent was a lot thicker. Like, were you here? Were, say it again. Were you here? In Virginia? Freshman year? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was here. I was here in Lakeland. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, did, so did I, did you meet me in your freshman year? Because I don't I remember so. if we were even the same class. I feel no, like you were here behind me. Man, I don't know. I, I, I don't so think it, no, because we, we had ROTC. Year in your freshman year. I know we were in ROTC together. Right. I think that's when I met you. And I think that was, um. damn, that might have been freshman year. No. No? We met, we met on an after-school bus. But it, I don't think it had anything to do with ROTC. Hmm. I feel like I we remember, <laughs> hung back to play Magic or something. I remember seeing you with yeah. Magic cards. But anyway, anyway. Yeah. So you come to Virginia. Yeah, I can't. So I came to Virginia, um, and I remember I was I was like flirting with this girl like every day at class. Like she was gorgeous, and I'm flirting with this girl. I'm flirting with this girl, and I finally, you know decided to try to hang out with her or whatever. She's like, whoa, 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 we can't chill or nothing. I'm like, what you mean? You're like, what's up? Really? You're like, you're like, she's like, she's like, nah, because my, 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 my dad's racist. I was like, whoa, hold up, top out. Like, mind you, I'm still a kid. You know, I'm young. I'm not, I didn't have, I was fortunate enough to not have to experience these things growing up for real. Other than, again, what my parents taught me, what, you know, what I learned through, through, you know, books and things like that. I never got, I was fortunate enough not to have to experience it like that. And so this right. girl, she so was like, Okay, go she's, ahead. she's like, well, we can't hang out because my dad's racist. I'm like, what you mean your dad's racist? What are you talking about? You know, like, 
really? Like I thought she was joking. Right, right. I, I, I legit, I legit thought it was she was joking. She was like, no, she was dead serious, like stone cold face. She was like, we could chill or we could, you know, hang out in school. Like, but as far as outside of school stuff, there was gonna be none of that. Definitely not dating or anything. I was like, damn, Virginia's kind of different out here, especially you know where we went to high school at in um Suffolk. So right, right. Um, well, actually, while you say that, I, I was just thinking, like, why don't you go ahead and kind of explain that that region of, so because that that suffolk is different to virginia beach is different to correct, chesapeake correct. is different to portsmouth so, so explain suffolk kind is, of the demographics <laughs> that you get especially then suffolk was like breaking up and broken up into three categories you had downtown right you had harborview right <laughs> and you had like the uh the obesity side it was it's pretty much it everything else in between is like rural area right but the obesity <laughs> side was more intermixed Correct, correct. Downtown and, was correct. traditionally black. Correct. And then Harborview was correct. more white. The, the rich. The rich. The rich <laughs> right. <people. laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> the, the point being too, and well, and you ha also had uh, the country because you correct. out toward Holland and stuff. And though that's, yeah. you know, Lakeland's out there basically. Yeah. And yeah. so you get a lot of country folk in there too, which is where yeah. some of this racism comes in. You know? Yeah, and it was, it, and, and the sad part was, it was actually pretty common, man. Like the more, the longer I was in school, the more and more I realized like that was a common thing with a lot of um, women. I remember our, our lunchrooms being segregated, right. you know, and I remember looking around, you know, cause you know, I'm, yeah, I'm a weirdo. Like I'm into so many different things. Like I didn't, I'm not a, I'm not hood, you know, I don't even, I don't even, you know, try to be. So like, I really didn't fit in with that crowd. I'm not a country boy. Like that's not happening. Right. Right. Like, so I'm it's like, true. Hey, you've just always been you and it, yeah, man. you know, oh, refreshingly to, to so considering yeah. both of us had very few friends. <laughs> like, it's, it's caused me a lot of pain. I'm not even gonna lie, man. But um, even, even some of our magic friends, even some of our nerd friends, like they were, still yeah. some of yeah. them uppity white kids and stuff you know like yeah and um that's how it was man yeah so i just i just sat by myself you know especially freshman year um sophomore year like i said i, I kind of fell in with the nerds which is cool you know that's my people man <laughs> right right. I fit right in um and 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 funny story man I, I'll, I'll i'll wrap up the high school real quick so by the time i got to my senior year i was um I was a relatively good drummer, right, on the drum line. Yeah, yeah, I recall. At Pink Sport. And so everyone knew me as, like, kind of like the nerd drummer. So, like, I, I didn't get bullied anymore because everyone knew I was on the drum line. Like, it was like, there was like 12 of us at that time at King's Sport on the drum right. line. So, yeah, we got a pass. Like, they, you know, well, it was right at the time that the movie drum line came out, too. Correct. So like running Correct. Shortly after. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, after that. And so, and it um, was cool. It was no longer yeah. a nerdy and, thing to do, be in the band. <laughs> Correct. So I'm like, I'm twirling my sticks. Everybody see me walking around with the drumsticks. They knew what time it was. Like, you right. know, like I, I was, you know, I got, I was most talented or whatever in the yearbook, whatever. So, but one of the, one, one story that sticks out to me and the, the person that um is in the story is on my Facebook. And so every day during study hall, I sat with this nerdy kid I met in freshman year. Right. I'm not right. going to say his name, but right. every day I sat with him. Yeah, I mean, another, as much as we can omit names of people, especially yeah. people we currently know, um, from and final names. Another friend of mine sat behind me, and both of them are white. Um, the person that sat behind me was a white girl, and the, the guy I sat with, you know. And so after study hall, one day, I said, let me sit with this, this other group of people. Now, before I finish the story, one thing I did, because I was always by myself in ninth grade, um, after that, whenever I saw someone sitting in the lunchroom by themselves, I always invited them to our table the nerds or whatever, because I know what that felt like, right? And so, you know, they're new to the school or whatever, they didn't know where, so I sat, talked with them, learned where they're from, stuff like that. And then they would go on and, and fall in with wherever, wherever they fell in at, right? So the, the table that I went and sat with after the lunch this day had four out of seven people that I personally knew, right? Like I knew these motherfuckers, like they sat alone in the lunchroom and I was like, yo, come sit with me, like that type of shit. So I go and sit at this table because, again, I know four to seven people, like whatever, you know. And then another person I didn't know when I sat down was like, why are you sitting over here? I'm like, because you know, I'm sitting over here. What's up? Like, I'm just hanging out or whatever. The study hall. We don't do nothing anyway. We ain't studying. We ain't right. talking and stuff. 
and and they were like, "Nah, you need to go sit with your white people." Really? Just like that, cold blooded. All right, all right. I mean, whatever it is, you know, it is what it is. And I remember some people, man. <laughs> some people. <laughs> I mean, and so I just, you know, got the up audacity. And, I just got up and sat with my white people. Like, what the fuck you want me to say? Like, and so. Um, I'll try not to curse, my bad. And um No, I, by so, all means curse. Oh, okay. <laughs> so and it hurt. And, and it it, you know, and I'll tell you why it hurt. And it happens to me a lot even now, sometimes at my job. Um I was raised to be prepared for racism by white people. You know, right. When when it when it comes from when it comes from white or anything you know, I'm cool. Like it's 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 par for the course almost, you know, like I understand it, I can accept it. But when I hear shit like that from my own people that look like me, that shit hurts, man. Right. That shit, that shit hurts. Like, and I must say, I've never experienced that. Like, it, I was when you just said what you said about you know you were raised to racial awareness by white people. I mean, the same is true for me in reverse, really. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I've never had that. Like I've had black friends all my life and I've never mm -hmm. in any school I've been in, and I've been in a lot of them. Uh, I've never had somebody white tell me like go hang out with your black friends. No. And unfortunately I've, I've heard shit like that a lot, man. Like, I mean, you know, a year or so at work, I, I went to a new crew at my job and one of the first things the guys, the guy whispered to one of these hood dudes because he didn't think me and him were cool because he's a hood guy, right? I, why would I be friends with someone, you know, a hood dude? But I'm a nice person. We get along, whatever. Right. So he tells the hood dude that I've known for years, he's like, hey, I guess we got another white boy on the crew. Based off what? How I talk? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like That's what it is, though. You know, and he was black. And, and, it, and like I said, when, when I hear shit like that, it it always hurts a thousand times more when I when I'm looking at a motherfucker who looked like me. Yeah, that's that's fucked up. So real fucked up. Uh, I mean, I, I guess you know that's definitely something that we wanted to touch on tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I hear a lot of people in the black community talking about that, like black on black issues like that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah, the whole like. I, you know, I had a guy say to me the other night, like, I'm no Uncle Tom, but blah, blah, blah. And it's like, mm -hmm. Uncle Tom shouldn't even be a thing, right? You're... Yeah, the, the thing is... I'm sure there's a story behind the actual Uncle Tom reference, right? But... Yes, yes. <laughs> um, the, the, about that particularly, the problem is, and, and it's not a Black thing, it's, it's anyone outside of what is normal or what is stereotypical. You know, you get you get called out and it gets pointed out the, like right. as soon as someone finds out i listen to metal music it's like a a big fucking a big issue or like they're surprised or like no nah, like, i love rap like rap always has my heart but guess what right. <laughs> a lot of times when i'm at work and, and i have my headphones in <laughs> it'd be a lot of screaming going on you just don't know it <laughs> right but, i mean, I mean music it, is music i think yeah. if you know um, if it's enjoyable, you know, then it's not racist if, music. It's just so music. another another one is like a viewpoint that I have that isn't shared by I'm actually super patriotic. Like I like I like the flag, you know, I served like I'm I have no issue with the American flag. And, you know, my people, you know, built this country. So I'm not going to be a second class citizen. And it, fuck that. Like, right, right. You know, um, so no, I don't have an issue with it. And I've 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 heard some things from some people that, you know, they don't they don't like my viewpoint on, you know, that specific viewpoint right. uh, that I have on that. Um, but yeah, and so school, you know, by the time I got out of high school, you know, it, it wasn't that it wasn't that bad. Um, joined the military and ended up getting stationed in Texas. That's when the real racism hit. Not if you're gonna lie, Virginia wasn't shit compared to Texas. Texas right. was off, off the fucking chain, like, For real? Off, off the chain, <laughs> like off the chain. So, um, so first of all, like, speak to your military experience first. Like, what branch okay. you were in, how long you so, were in for, so, where you went overall. Okay, but, well, it's, but it's, then get it's to not, Texas, right? 
Yeah, it's not that long. I got stationed in Texas. Um, I wanted to be a, a canine handler. You were in the Air Force, right? Correct. Correct. I was in the Air Force. I want to be a canine handler. So in order to do that, I need to be a, a cop. So I was a, a military cop. Um, and I did four years and got out. But while I was in, I did go to Iraq to um, a prison in Iraq called Camp Buka. Um, I, th- I believe it's closed now. Um, but where I was stationed at in the middle of nowhere in North Texas, I did they were, I, I've had my fair share of things that I wish I didn't. And, you know, being a young man, it was kind of frustrating. Um, like one, one day I didn't like people to know when I was in the military, when I, when I wasn't at work. So like, I didn't really dress like I was in the military. I didn't right. really, you know, I, I just didn't like it for whatever reason. So anyway, me and my friend are out at this, um, this mall in town and we go into the shoe store and we're talking to the dude in the store and we keep it moving. And then he, he pulls us, he's like, hey, you know, can I talk to y'all for a second? We're like, sure. You know, he's like, y'all not from around here, are you? <laughs> no, like, I'm, I'm from Virginia and Jersey. He was from like St. Louis and Houston or something like that. And right. uh, and I was like, well, why are you asking us that? Like, it's mad random. He was like, well, people, he said, well, black people around here don't talk to white people. I'm like, what? <laughs> And he was like, yeah, black people don't talk to white people. White people don't talk to black people. He said, so I knew you wasn't from around here when you came in here and started talking to me. Wow. Well, and he's like, he's like, no, no, no. But when he saw our face, he was like, no, no, no. I, I, I didn't mean it like that. I was just saying, like, I'm from California. Like, it was just awkward that y'all. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So it was cool. You know, everything was cool after that. But like, it's Texas is wild, man. I remember my, um, my child's mother, when, when she lived in Texas, when they found out I was black, she got fired from her job the next day because I drove by. I used to have this old eclipse, right? I drove by and this eclipse, like blasting music in my military uniform, going to work. And then she was outside and was like, oh, that's my that's my boyfriend right there. Yo, next day she was fired. True story, man. Wow. She was like, it was like it was like a third day at the job. <laughs> wow. She said, um, you know, they wouldn't hire black people where she, you know, where she was working at and Texas, where I was at in Texas, at least was off the chain. So, wow. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. Yeah. Man. See, when you don't, that's the problem too. Like here in Virginia as a whole, it's very intermixed here. So much military people from mm-hmm. everywhere. You def- I've, I've met a lot of people from New York here. Yeah. Um, you know, just people from literally everywhere intermingling here in within these seven cities, as we call them. And uh, it it's not so prevalent here. People just go to the store and, you know, like there's no there is no question. You know, there's Indian people that own the stores. There's black people that own stores There's white people that own stores. It it's just we don't get that as much here i'm not saying it doesn't exist it's much more under wraps clearly um Mm -hmm. and the more verbal you get the more racism you find but i mean you know and 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 then on the opposite of that the more inner city you get you know the the more racism i i've found in my experience in schools and stuff here too and you know We'll get to that, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, man, that's that's a shame that that there are even sections of our country that are like that. <laughs> I mean, it's it's. Let just... me let me explain something to you, man. I'll never forget this. My first, my I was in processing at that base. I had this in processing briefing. The the sergeant that was giving me the the whole room, the in processing briefing, she in a very political way, right? In a very political way, she basically said, "If you are a minority, do not get caught outside of the city." straight up like she said it in a very political way she said if we go south go straight to dallas like do not stop (laughs) do not pass go take your ass straight to dallas because if you stop anywhere in between just you may encounter just some hardcore racism some bullshit some bullshit man okay and that was the (laughs) bro she said in a very political way but i knew what the fuck she meant when she said it and guess what? I not stop. <laughs> I mean, it just really goes to show what what kind of blinders certain people have on based on their current environments. 
You know what I mean? When you don't witness right. shit like that every day, it's not even right. in your purview. You know, right. you um, it's, think about it. One thing I, I, I struggle with is um, I try to be knowledgeable and keep up with a lot of things that happen. And I try to keep my eyes open to a lot of things that, you know, that are happening and stuff. But I sometimes I get to a certain point where it's like I have to stop. I have to stop because it's affecting my attitude. Does that make sense? Because yeah. I don't ever, I don't ever want to teach my son, or or ever want to be in a situation where I'm, I'm my, my first thought is negative. I don't ever want to come up to someone and be like, "I'm gonna have a ne- a negative view on you because you are a certain way." That makes right. sense, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and so I get to a certain point when it comes to to racial things that I really have to take a step back. Take a deep breath, you know, decompress, um, and 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 then you know, but but at the same time, I don't want to be oblivious to things. <clears throat> right. So it's a it's a, it's a fine line. And again, I don't ever want my son to have that viewpoint. Yeah. Uh, you know. So. So, uh, tell me a little bit about that story you were telling me off air about what happened. <laughs> uh, okay. It's a you funny had to rough somebody up over. So it's a funny one. So in the military, I didn't I didn't drink when I when I got in the military. You know, um, I, I was babysitting one beer for hours. Actually, I was actually in a room on my Nintendo DS playing like Pokemon or a video game or something, on the phone with a, a cousin of mine. Right. Um, and so I'm talking on the phone, and this guy that I work with was really drunk. Like he's an alcoholic, like, and everybody knew it. And he kept coming in there. Every, every 10, 15 minutes, he kept coming in there bothering me, um, trying to get me to come out to the party or whatever. But I was, you know, I'm just doing my normal loner thing, just in the room, chilling in my own little world, playing video games. And so I'm on the phone with my cousin. And the last time he came in there, he knocked down like this radio that was um, in like the common area. So I knew like when he, when, it, when that happened, I just knew like some, like he was just, so I told my cousin, like, yo, I'll call you back. And um, so I hung up the phone and I like met him at the door. And he um just running his mouth, running his mouth, running his mouth, running his mouth. And so we like kind of we like grabbed each other or whatever, and I pushed him out into the outside. And he was just talking shit. Oh, you're in here playing video games instead of out here talking to chicks and shit, and also the also the shit. Right. I was like, man. I said, I swear to God, you better be glad. Like, I work with you or I'll fuck you up. Like, I, just, I, told, I said something along those lines, right? Also, I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to be labeled as like the angry black man. I was like one of the only black people at the time, you know, in the military on my flight or whatever, where I was working. Right, right. So I can't. I didn't have the, the luxury of having an altercation with anybody because then all of a sudden I'm just angry and bitter and fucking all that other shit. It's like, whatever, man. So I walked away. I started walking back to my room. So a pure example of white privilege. And he was like, he was like, fuck you, like, fuck you, fuck you, you ain't nothing but it. You know, he said the N-word. So now you gotta look at it like this. Um I mean, you can say it, bro. You no, I mean, I don't say it. You, I, I, yeah, <laughs> so, not in this case, but uh, if you wanted to like, so there's no whole bar on this. Everybody, um everybody was watching, everybody was looking, you know, and I'm just like, damn, like, like that's where we go at now, like. You know, that's, that's your first thought when you have, a, you know, an issue with somebody, you just, you know, so I was mad and I was young, you know, I turned around and we got into a little tussle and he ended up on the ground and, you know, it is what it is what happened, but, um, but it's just, the, the, the thing that bothered me the most was, why was that your first go-to when you got mad? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you could you could said a lot of things, <laughs> but if that's your first go to when you got mad because I'm black. Then that tells me a lot of things I need to know about you as a person. About yeah. you as a person, correct? Well, how shallow people can be too, yeah. right? Well, um, so it is. I mean, again, I'm in Texas. I don't have no friends, no family. Um, I'm around a bunch of people that aren't like me <laughs> in various right <laughs> i remember when obama won like me and me and another guy had to like celebrate in the bathroom because everybody was <laughs> where I worked at. <laughs> like, God, dude that's awful like texas I, I could not wait to get out of texas man. <laughs> so but yeah 
No offense to Texas as a whole, but no, Dallas was Dallas was really nice, man. Dallas, yeah. Was, Dallas is a real nice city, man. I love, I love, I'm in Dallas all the time. Joe Rogan touts Austin. I, I I've only oh, ever yeah. been to Houston, and that was okay. a long time ago. Gotcha. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't there long enough to have any kind of interactions at all, let alone racial tension. Yeah. Um, so was there anything else that you wanted to share about your story in the, in the military, um, either in the military or just your life story? And I in think, terms um, of interactions about me specifically, I think a lot of people, they don't realize how like open-minded I am, how much, right. you know, reading I do, um, you know, they, they, they look at me and see the tattoos and the, the big black man. They, they, they make assumptions and stuff like that. Um, but one thing I'm trying to, one the things that cause me issues, like with building relationships with people, um, whether, you know, friendships with men or trying to find, you know, a girlfriend or whatever, a lot of, a lot of times it's like they, they like a specific thing and realize I'm, I'm much more than that. So I'll give you an example. Like I had a lot of issues with um, like the type of music I listen to right now, not because anything I listen to is particularly bad. It's just, I listen to metal. I listen to a lot of rap. I listen to, you know, when jazz. you say metal, what do you mean? Like you can throw out specifics. Just like a few bands. Yeah. Oh, I, I like the, I like the, I, I kind of like the depressing stuff sometimes, like the emo, like I get, I get in my emo bag a lot, man. Like bullet um, for my Valentine or like. Uh, that, that's a good one. Asking I love Alexandria. them. <laughs> old, <laughs> asking, old asking Alexandria, not new acts. I don't know what to do. Right, 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 right. <laughs> now I just, uh, uh, I can't. Dude, asking Alexandria has one of the best intros to a CD that I've ever um, heard. Alarian, Alurian. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Alarium, Alarium, something like that, dude. That intro is the sickest shit, bro. Yeah, it's dope. And actually, the track that comes after that is phenomenal. (laughs) My cousin showed me that for the first time, or you know, showed me, but played it for me for the first time. And And, oh man, that's the thing. People don't realize how much music I listen to. Like you named one band, we're talking about a specific song, and I knew exactly what it was. Right. I listen to a lot of music and music it's so important to me so when i meet you know people people they, they think certain things or they think because i listen to metal i don't know anything about rap and i, I just crushed them right hip-hop. crushed them <laughs> like, and um but i also listen to jazz you know um, right I have a whole jazz playlist i love and i'm all that come from your dad playlist. say it again Does that come from your dad my dad always um pushed me to be open minded and to do what I wanted to do. Like he right. Um as long as I wasn't hurting nobody, he always, especially when it came to music, he was like, nah, listen, my dad was a musician. He's like, listen to whatever you want, man. Right. <laughs> like, I remember your house being like full of pictures. Mm-hmm. But I yeah. don't remember ever taking any of them in. Okay. Um, they, my house was like a black history museum. Was it? I, yeah, it was. I, I thought so. All I, can't, I can't recall everything. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, though. I, I wish yeah. I would have paid more attention, honestly. Yeah. Um, so, and, and, and that's why I get frustrated sometimes because people, they kind of try to label me as um like being a white, white. boy. Or I'm super pro black. Like, right. Like, like, come on, man. Like, don't. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's frustrating because a lot of times the way I talk and some of my positions on things, some people get, you know, the wrong idea. Right, uh, right. But I mean, know, I'm, music, I get mischaracterized music. in the same way, you know, mm-hmm. different but no, way, music, but yeah, music's a big thing. Um, and I don't, know, I, I just, I just know I run into issues, whether it be like video games or magic or you know any other guns. I'm, you know, I love gun. You know me, I love guns, man. Like. Right. And it, it, a lot of times, whoever I'm trying to build a relationship with, there's something about something that I'm into that they just can't wrap their fucking brain around, you right. know. Um, you know, I got because you I don't conform to their correct. ideal black man. Correct. 
Correct. Right. And I, you know, I got I got hood dudes I hang out with. You know, I, got, I mean, how sad is that though? You don't conform to black people's ideal black man or mm-hmm. white people's ideal black man. That's true. And then so that's what you're saying. Like it's a very catchy correct catchy, catch twenty two type situation you find yourself correct. in. And and like even I got a, a country dude that we couldn't have grew up any like country in the middle of nowhere in Gloucester. I'm from, you know, Jersey. It's just but our views and our, our goals and the things we, you know, care about most all aligned, right? Right. People people look at us funny sometimes at work because I, I'm like, why are you, you, me, being me, talking to someone who looks like that? Like, he's got like a camo hat on and a camo shirt on and shit, tucks his shirt in like super country. Like, right. I'm like, like and, you know, and I'm the type of person I always have been, even in high school. I was like, I don't give a fuck, man. I'm not going to I'm not going to not be friends with someone because it looks a certain way. You know, it's funny. I was going to include this in my story portion, but I'll bring it up now. <laughs> since you just okay. that. But. Um, one of my experiences, you know, I told you I used to have a stepdad who was had a lot of prejudices. Yeah. I won't say that he was a full blown racist because he never really went out of his way to hate on black people you know I never saw him have any altercations with black people in the store or anything like that but Mm -hmm. behind closed doors he definitely would share some of his own prejudices and one of them that he rubbed off rubbed off on me was a prejudice against interracial relationships and I had that when I met you now that didn't mean Mm -hmm. I couldn't have black friends but I was against like (laughs) male female stuff (laughs) and Mm -hmm. You are the person that changed my mind on that. And I, I'm a buddy. Any in, idea how? <laughs> well, I'm a buddy in just for a second. I've changed, believe it or not, a lot of white people's viewpoint on black people in general. And on one hand, I'm like, damn, like it's kind of sad. But then it's like, well, at least I was the one per, you know, now maybe you won't make assumptions anymore. You know, that makes sense. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. I'm, I'm giving you credit for this, but you're, mm-hmm. you're directly, indirectly responsible. You but, gave me the first porn I ever had. Yo, <laughs> what was it? What was it? It was all black porn or well, well, it was <laughs> like it black from? Brazilians. Hey. <laughs> that shit Yo. was dirty bro but i it changed my opinion i was like fuck like <laughs> this is how they built in brazil <laughs> it's, it's not bad <laughs> right it's just like if i find black people oh. attractive then i have to or black women attractive <laughs> then i have to suspend my irrational belief that irra- interracial relationships are taboo or whatever you know I, again it, it the way you balance these things as a kid is very delicate and yeah surface like you have no understanding you know yeah. and that's what i was going to get at um in my story was that so i'll back up and i'll i'll tell my story a little bit um i grew up my mom had me when she was 19 and her and my dad split up at three months when I was three months old, basically. That's the way I understand it. They both have their own versions of it. And it's hard <laughs> of course, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, <laughs> but anyway, I, I spent about like my early life. My mom met another guy. He was abusive. We left, we came back. We pretty much stayed poor all the time. And then uh, my mom met my sister's dad and things took a turn in our lives for the better. Uh, But in school, uh, the the early schools that I went to were all pretty well mixed in terms of race. Okay. Or and or white and i just didn't notice (laughs) okay so excuse forgive me if i (laughs) if that's the case um but when i reached i want to say middle school 
like my mom had split up with my sister's dad at that point and she had met my brother's dad and uh i don't think my brother was even born yet but i we moved to this area of virginia beach to a, a set of townhomes called green lakes and okay. i don't know how it is now but it's uh back then it was predominantly black and i hate that word predominantly it sounds so predacious <laughs> and i just but anyway it was primarily a black neighborhood and mm -hmm. the school that i went to from that neighborhood plaza was mixed but it was still leaned in the direction of primarily black so mm -hmm. um the neighborhood that that neighborhood taught me a lot <laughs> about racism and and how it goes and so I, I i told you this story but um my stepdad taught me a word and i'm not going to repeat the word because i don't want to give that word any power but uh he taught me this word behind closed doors and i think in some white confidence of some kind that i would just keep it to myself but i was a mm. naive kid and i took that word and me and these other kids were playing football in between some townhouses and I, I feel like he he intentionally hurt me and then i attacked him with this word mm -hmm. he immediately ran and got his big brother and was about to chase my ass down and beat me up but i <laughs> ran home because i knew what was coming my way yeah and his mom showed up with him and his brother in tow and proceeded to have a giant screaming match with my parents and all of this transpired to as a learning tool for me to understand that like racism is a real issue you know it, it, it wasn't just that i mean i moved into an, a primarily black neighborhood and mm -hmm. i i was a basketball player growing up too so I played basketball with all black kids. I played football with all black kids. Like, and I, I, I don't think at that time it was a real issue until that moment when I made it an issue. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, but at school and stuff, I always got called white boy and, you know, stuff like that. And mm -hmm. not that that's as offensive as some things that are derogatory from whites to blacks, but you know, it, it doesn't feel any better <laughs> to you know and and so that that school was the first real kind of eye opener for me as far as racism was concerned and then um then we moved to suffolk and <laughs> the school was there good. i mean i went to jfk which mm. was also primarily black and then king's fork was built Mm -hmm. And so I went to Kings Fork for eighth grade, and that was more mixed, mm -hmm. but I think lent white. Okay. Um, so I, I, race wasn't really an issue there, but at JFK, it definitely was. Like, my being white was not an issue, but it was pointed out, right? Okay more than you would like <laughs> mm -hmm. if you were constantly being called out as the black guy the black guy, like the one black guy or you know like yeah. you, said, you know even in magic i mean we i don't think we took you as a token black guy or anything like that but there weren't a lot of black people playing magic <laughs> right so no. it, but you wouldn't have wanted to be pointed out as our one black friend right it, it just, yeah. so yeah. It, it, i got that a lot i mean a lot cracker honky white boy you know all that shit <laughs> all that shit but and even being called larry bird right like it's a compliment but it's also it's also not <laughs> that's mm. the one white guy you can think of that plays basketball that's good <laughs> That's the I mean, it was guy. a beat. <laughs> yeah. Only one guy. There's, a, you know, obviously, over the last twenty-five years, basketball has expanded 
in terms of how many better white players there have been. But anyway, that was always the go-to. That or uh, was it Steve Nash? <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, I heard it all, okay? I'm not making this shit up. <laughs> I got called all these things. So, or is it Kevin Nash? No, Kevin Nash is a wrestler, right? Kevin Nash is a wrestler. Yeah, anyway, Steve Nash. So, um, where was I? I backtracked to middle school. So, then going to Lakeland, I mean, it was, it was much of the same thing. You know, all, all of my classes were filled with black people that hated me i mean I, yeah. for whatever you know i all i wanted to do was get along yeah. um i i watched this video a while back and it, it was a viral video of a black kid that was telling society or the world whatever how his mom taught him rules to live by being mm -hmm. black and okay. and some of them were like uh like don't make eye contact and Mm -hmm. uh you know don't wear dark clothes at night and don't go bumping your music in places you shouldn't be you know i mean some of it was no, 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 like right. sensible advice and then some of it was like okay this is like because of your black because, advice correct right? and i mean it was a, i mean majority of, of black kids get the same speech bro yeah yeah and I and, and it sucks it when I watch that parent. video, like we're, both, we're both parents, you know, and it, yeah. it's, sucks, you know, while my son <laughs> might not be as dark as me, <laughs> the motherfucker ain't white. I'll tell you that. <laughs> right, right. You know, and so I'm going to have to have the same, you know, I'm going to have to have the same realization with him. Like, and, and I mean, I'm young, honestly, I'm hoping that, that we can really change that. I mean, the fact is, I think we'll get into this deeper, but, mm. you know, it's not like nothing has changed since civil rights, right? Things have gotten progressively better. I'm not saying they're perfect. They're definitely not. Mm -hmm. They have gotten better. And they're going to continue to get better because people like us are going to have more conversations like this. And Correct. we can put that shit in the open and we're going to change the, it. So I would say the, the issue is, in my heart, I, I do believe that things are slowly getting better. Like, I want to believe that. Right. What isn't getting better is the fact that, you know, social media is having a positive and a negative effect on situations. Right? Absolutely. And in a, in a lot of this, different situations. That's what this podcast forum here that I'm creating is all about. Like, it's right. about shining a light on that and, and breaking through that and, shit. And on one hand, I'm happy that negative things get exposed that it is i always say if you if you think this is bad now like imagine what we didn't see you know what i'm saying like imagine right. imagine the shit that was going on 20 years ago before everybody had a fucking camera like right shit right. was probably absolutely so in my heart i do want to believe it gets better but on the flip side every everything that everything is going to be recorded everything is going to hit the internet and it's going to enrage a lot of people. Whereas before you had newspapers where, you know, in their cities or whatever, they might've saw the paper, but a lot of people didn't see the news outside of the city, definitely not outside the state they were in. Now, yeah, shit's I mean, on now Facebook, everything is everywhere. Shit, right? millions of people are going to see it in 24 hours. Like, right. depending on how, how big a situation is. And like I said, that could have a positive and a negative effect. Like it, it, it social media is, is. Well, I mean, a lot of people jump to conclusions, right? You know, whether. I, I will say I was a. The thing is, there has been so many things that have happened negatively on video that people are quick to, um, to jump now, you know? Right. right. Um, but I don't blame them because it, it just I'm tired. I, like there's so many things that people see on video, man, including myself. I'm just I just shake my head, man. Well, like, I wanna I, I do wanna get into this more yeah later in our conversation, yeah. but to get back to what I was saying, I'm, I'm not yeah. trying to cut you off or no, you're good. what you were saying. 
Um, so I watched this video of this kid talking about mm -hmm. the rules, issues, yeah. the rules of being black, right? Yeah. And uh, what was ironic is that most of those lessons I had to teach myself to live mm -hmm. in a black world. Okay. Because if I made eye contact with the wrong kid in school, mm -hmm. I was about to be fucking dog for the rest of the day. It was a problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they would be up my ass mm -hmm. and, and, you know, yeah. it just, so I get it. You know what I like? I don't, I don't understand all of the black struggle, but I mm -hmm. do understand in a sense what it's like to be a minority. You, you know what I mean? Like, at least in a mm -hmm. school population. I, I get what you're saying. You know, um, so I've always felt for that plight. You know what I mean? I've always hated racism from like, like ever since I've understood that it was an issue and my own transgression that I just discussed, like I've, I've always hated racism <laughs> vehemently. And, uh, you know, that it's a big reason why I wanted to have you on tonight to talk about mm -hmm. these things. You know, I, I, yeah. I don't know that we're going to be responsible for bridging any divides here or anything, but I, mm -hmm. I do hope that people will listen to this with an open mind, you know, yeah. and it really is about opening some to like you were just talking about this particular area of Texas and probably the broader Texas mm -hmm. <laughs> um <laughs> so and that shit's got to change man like and but people from the outside can't put pressure on things like that to change if we don't know mm. um again I'm, like there, there's so many times when I've found myself so naive to correct no, 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 no. I, things that I, you know, I, I, I don't live there. I don't, I don't deal with this shit on a daily basis. So correct. I understand that. I can't I, understand I agree, that play. I agree with that to, to some extent. And I, I will argue that that might be the case for children and pre social media. But at the end of the day, you can't have millions of people saying there's an issue. And then you'd be like, nah, nah, I don't think so. You know, right, so right, right. That makes sense. So like that that's my issue. Like I you literally have people saying how they feel. You know what I'm saying? Like they they you know regardless if you agree with them or not, like at least try to understand where they're coming from. You don't you're never gonna agree with someone on everything. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So like, 100%. But people are so quick to be like, no, you're wrong. Like, bro, you ain't even listen. Right. <laughs> you, you ain't even listen. Like, no, you're wrong. Like you, you, and a lot of times it's people not understanding anything about the other person or the situation or where they're from or what they're going through or it's just like no nah, I didn't grow up like that I ain't experienced none of that it's but not see possible. you get that a lot <laughs> you know so, but I also get that a lot mm -hmm. you know in different ways um in <laughs> in the same way of like this two-party system thing that we're dealing with today you know if you say one positive thing about somebody you're lumped Correct. in with that group Correct. you know like it doesn't mean that i support everything that so and so does or says or you know mm -hmm. or the talking points that get thrown at you and shit like that i mean but mm -hmm. the same is true in in that facet of society as well that you know I guess in some instances, it, it's weird. Again, when you don't, I don't interact with racist people on a daily basis. You know, I've had, I've had plenty of black people be racist to me, mm -hmm. but I, if I were to compare the instances of that versus the amount of white people that i've actually seen be racist to someone like it's it's not really ever happened again i've i've had my parents like share certain prejudices here and there or you know i've heard white people throwing out the n-word when they 
have no business doing it. They're either trying to be cool or they feel comfortable enough. Like you were saying about him, like he, he showed some of his true color there. Like they feel comfortable enough because I'm white and because we're having a discussion about something that they just, you know, well, I'm just going to throw this out there and see how he reacts to it. Well, I'm just going to let you be you. You know what I mean? Like you said about that dude in school, like go hang out with your white friends. Well, okay. Yeah. I guess so. Fuck you too, then. I'm just going to let you be you. And, you know, I'm a, but, th and this is what I was saying on my intro the other day about uh, sometimes the people in the middle just kind of defer to the people with the, the shitty opinions. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not going to agree. I don't agree with you but I'm not going to tell you I don't agree with you because mm -hmm. it's just going to incite a fucking problem for me. Right. Right. I'm just, because I'm clearly yeah. outnumbered here or whatever Correct. the case may be. Yeah, um, Everybody trying to fit in or, or, or we work together. Like you're saying, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to cause a thing about this because we work together. So I'm just going to let you fucking say whatever it is you've got to say. Correct. Um, you know, I think, a lot of that happens and I think a lot of it happens way too much and goes unchecked mm -hmm. you know it really comes down to people like us checking that behavior and I actually have an instance of this and uh I've thought about this story multiple times and I'm just gonna fucking tell it how it is so yeah. I uh I love you mom <laughs> but oh that's he good. was over here I mean, this was just a couple of years ago. And my mom has a way of talking that if you know my mom, you know she's not racist. You know what I mean? She's had multiple black boyfriends at this point. She, uh, I've always listened to rap my whole life. I've always had black friends over to my house. Like if she was truly racist, none of that shit would have ever happened, right? So with that being said she was over here and i i tried to offer her i think some uh it, it was some bread with like buttercream inside and it's a korean thing it's like a really nice treat <laughs> like cake almost and uh she was like is that that korean shit and i don't think she meant anything by it but i took it like okay i'm fucking fed up with this and i like snapped and i was like mom i have korean family i have a half korean brother and sister i have a korean stepmom and an extended yeah. korean family i've lived there i've been with them you know they are as much my people as any other people that i've ever enjoyed time with right um you know, my wife is English. She's an immigrant. She is white, but she is still an immigrant, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, my mom has made snide comments about English people. And that should, I mean, Americans do that all the time. My wife mm -hmm. takes offense to that because she's English. Right. You know? And and we don't think about it, but we say all kinds of shit that puts down the English and or the British, as we call them often. And, you know, we don't think like, man, that might actually hurt somebody to hear, you know. Um, so she she said that and I snapped. I'm like, you know, I got Korean family. I got an English wife, you know, and for all intents and purposes and her her black boyfriend was sitting here. Uh, I'll, I'll just let him remain nameless for the sake of anonymity. But he was sitting here and uh, I, I was like, for all intents and purposes, I'm black. Like I'm clearly complexion wise I'm not but I grew up in black neighborhoods I grew up listening to rap music and I still love rap music to this day and no I don't listen to everything they say and take it to heart but I wouldn't be who I am without black culture okay that's all right, all right. I, that's I would not I wouldn't be half of who I am today without mm -hmm. black culture and so I fucking take offense Mm -hmm. you saying that shit in my house <laughs> I, I lost my shit with her and I've never had an issue with her since 
and I, you know, I, I hope that that was a learning experience, <laughs> but, uh, I just won't have that, man. I, I so vehemently oppose racism and, and you're a, kind of, I thought you were going to tell the story about your mom when we were kids. About my mom, what? Talk, saying, uh, talk about how I talked. Do you remember? Oh, right. Actually, I wanted you to tell that story, okay. but we kind of glossed over it. But uh, okay. we can back up and and you can go ahead and share that experience. Was this the first time you came to my house? I think so. I, I believe it was the first time. Or, yeah. or after the first time, because well, I naively I approached you and said what I said. <laughs> My mom said so, you come back over again because or whatever. I don't I don't remember how I phrased it. I got you. So okay. so for everyone watching, I, I go to his house for the first time. I had a blast, you know, doing kid shit, playing cards, magic, whatever. Um, and I, I introduced myself, you know, my parents always taught me to be super respectful. Um, and I I met your mom and I, I don't know if I shook her hand exactly, but I know she said hey to me. I said hey to her, and we maybe had small talk and kept it moving. Right. Uh, and so, the next day. Well, we were probably on a mission to play magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all we were. Yeah, and so I don't know. It's the next day in school or something. I was like, oh, you know, I, I don't know if I asked you about your mom or what she, whatever. Long story short, I remember you saying, "Yeah, your mom said you speak so well." <laughs> My mom. Right. And I was, and I was like. Oh, okay. But again, me being me, my first conclusion wasn't anything negative. Right. I just kept it moving. Like, I, I didn't think anything of it, honestly. Because again... Well, it was I, a fresh topic for you in a sense, right? Yeah. And so the I go home, and one thing my parents always did, they always interrogated me about where I went, who I spoke to, what they said, like everything. Okay. So, and so I had to go home. I was like, oh, yeah, his mom said I speak so well. And they, they, they kind of paused. They're like, what you mean speak so well? And I'm like, I don't know. That's just what she said. It was like, what, speak so well for a black guy? And I was just like, oh. Yeah. And I'm just like, damn it. <laughs> and see, sadly, this and is I never told weird. you. Go I ahead. never told you. I never told you till we had that conversation on Facebook recently. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but see, and sadly... I knew better, but I said it anyway, because mm -hmm. I didn't think about it, because mm -hmm. I was naive to it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I knew that the reason she said you speak well is because you weren't using a bunch of slang and acting ghetto or what, you know, I knew <laughs> that that's what she was saying. Yeah. And yet I still fucking said that to you anyway, from just this naive place of white privilege essentially mm. and I, I i've already said it but i i i am sorry for that shit man like i don't know you good? 13 you know or 15 or whatever like i don't and I, I actually appreciate your um your dad is that that was the other person who who chimed in in that thread from when i when i told that story on facebook someone it, it was a it was a, it was a guy came and apologized also for that for that interaction i don't remember who exactly it was to be honest oh, okay. with okay i don't i don't recall either yeah it was it was another guy that came could in it could have been one of my uncles or something like maybe. that I don't, I don't know maybe and you know and, and, and uh, actually i think i think it was my uncle lorenz i'm not i'm not okay. 100 on that but i think it was yeah because honestly i wasn't telling that story to to for any you know i was just i for, I, I forgot even what the the main post was about um the main and, post the main okay. post was me sharing my story Ooh. of my experience of being the victim of racism God, yep, black yep. People. i remember and then i, I remember Vito posted something about white silence is violence and i was uh, like you know he's right i should say something and so mm -hmm. i decided to share my perspective on my story to mm -hmm. finish by saying i fucking hate racism and we really need to end it but yeah. I wasn't standing up for the movement of Black Lives Matter enough, I guess, is what the issue was, right? So I think what people were trying to tell me was like, you can share this story, but now's not the time or something like that. And I was just like, mm -hmm. it's my story. Like, when is the time for me? I'm, I'm not trying to say that 
all white people are victims or even that white privilege doesn't exist none of that like mm -hmm. i'm just sharing my perspective yeah and again i just i i want to to put an end to as much racism as possible within the system within yeah. individuals within certain regions of our country like mm -hmm. we got to move some folks in some places and start really incorporating okay. some change you know I, I um i know we're gonna we're branching off to a, a different subject here i think one of the the, the major issues well we kind of touched on it earlier um i don't think i don't think they want people to come together man to be honest you, with you the powers that be the powers that be yes um say it's a conspiracy theorist or whatever you know whatever would you, you would say. you say that that's the one percent or would you say it's more of like an Illuminati type thing where it's not just the 1% of rich people, but it's also politicians. It's also. Well, well and I'll tell, I mean, I, I honestly don't know, but I'll tell you, I mean, I know world why. Leaders. I know why, because as soon as you come together, you have leverage. And if you have leverage, then you can enact change. And they don't, they don't, they don't want black people to come together. They don't That's, want the system to change because it benefits <laughs> them right now. Correct. They right. don't want black people to come together and they don't want, black people and white people to come together you know and it, it's clear as day if you follow history look at every black historical figure from the leaders of the, the black panther party to you know malcolm x martin luther king um sam cook like <laughs> it, it's it's so evident the last thing they wanted was for black people to come together i, I want to be clear like we're gonna have you back at some point for mm -hmm. another episode hopefully multiple episodes and i definitely want to dive into black history with yeah. you and and for myself you mm -hmm. know and, but also for viewers that are interested you know i i really think that there's a lot that i do know but there's so much that i don't know and i just you don't know what you don't Actually, know. i love new information so mm -hmm. i'd like to find out you know? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, we don't have to go down that rabbit hole. I just no, like, no, you know, right. I had to, I, my a friend of mine didn't know what Black Wall Street was or what happened or anything like that, right. and so I explained it and showed him some, you know, some footage, just you know, some things, and he was just he was just baffled. It was a white guy. He was just he was just kind of speechless. I was like, I had no fucking clue, and I was like. That was the point. Like they didn't want you. They don't want motherfuckers to know. You right. Know? That is literally like. <laughs> um. But but yeah yeah we can definitely do that one day, man. I'm always down. So that uh, with this this I'll transition to our mm -hmm. next kind of topic, and we wanted to talk about the whole George Floyd incident and uh, just kind of what resulted from okay. that um so, so can, what what's your opinion all right so your whole opinion on what happened in the george this, floyd video okay, and what you I'll, know about the situation okay i'll give you my specific viewpoint on this situation and my specific viewpoint in a lot of these other situations i'm going to kind of lump a bunch of them together go ahead. So, go ahead so first and foremost i don't as a police officer right you have to have a certain level of um, judgment. Right. They actually give cops a lot of leeway when it comes to making decisions whether to arrest somebody or whether not to, whether right. to, whether to let's say you know pull someone out of vehicle or let them let them sit in their vehicle or argue with them or you know there's a lot of gray area when it comes to policing. Well, right? a lot of that is the good old boys network, right? Um, they sure. allow them that leeway because well, whatever it is they choose to do, they're going to support them so that one of theirs well, doesn't go down. The, law, the laws governing police officers are written in such a way to protect the police officers, in a sense, which is why a lot of them end up getting off. But right. so anyway, the back to George Floyd, because the cops have so much gray area, there's so much gray area, like it wasn't a need, like there wasn't no need to do anything like they thought they was doing whatever like they were doing whatever the fuck they wanted to do essentially right like he wasn't he wasn't even resisting was he no i mean not from what he, i saw even if he was even if he was before that like i don't it doesn't matter 
it doesn't matter because for like what was eight minutes seven minutes my man was just, you know well yeah yeah but i'm saying <laughs> for the from the original moment of taking him down was he actually resisting i'm not saying he deserved any um, of the following I'm, but um, to be I, subdued I, in that way i would can't require recall. you to have done something i can't recall seeing anything that showed him like fighting police officers or anything. I didn't like that. think so. No, nah, but but I mean, but again, even if he did, it doesn't like it doesn't matter. No, I, it like, doesn't. It doesn't justify any want. of it other than no, and that's abduction. And that's my or a moment like, enough to get compliance. That's my viewpoint on a lot of these police situations. Honestly, I, I don't like that someone can kill somebody that's unarmed and get away with it. I don't care what the reasoning is. Like right. The end of a life is more valuable than that. Right. And I understand, like I understand. I'm not saying cops have an easy job because they don't. Like right. they don't. but what I'm saying is like a life is more valuable and we need to put more emphasis on making sure motherfuckers don't die. Right. Uh, and 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 to the people are so quick to say, well, if you weren't out committing crimes, you wouldn't be shut up. Like it, it the, so you telling me if I go rob a fucking if I go steal some shit from somebody's car or something I deserve to die? Is that what you're saying? Like is that what we're getting at here? No, right. fuck, right? Fuck no, like it, it, yeah. it, the people are so quick to oh if you if you follow the laws and nothing would happen. Look, 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 like people go to jail all the time that are innocent. So no, that shit's not true. Right. Well, and right. like you're saying, I mean, there's a certain amount of assertion. That you need to use with each situation correct and, and, and they give they give police a lot of leeway and it leads to a lot of problems and at right. least from getting off you know right <laughs> and it, it sucks because i like again i feel like every life is precious man and right. no one deserves to die that's doing something as minuscule even if you're fighting a cop like just because you're fighting a cop doesn't mean you deserve to die. I don't right. Care. Hey, right. The, the cop should have been in the gym more. He signed up for this shit. Like, get your hands right. I don't know what to tell you. He doesn't, <laughs> right. He doesn't deserve to die. Like, right. Um, and that's what that's what frustrates me about all of these situations. And it's not as cut and dry as oh, just don't commit crimes. You won't. You have no. That's the, no. That's not no. There's plenty of situations where conversations got out of hand, and the or the cops on a fucking power trip. And a lot of people, because of culturally, people are scared of the police. People are scared in the black community of the police. And the police are scared of people in the black community. So what, what imagine that. Both right. of y'all scared. Right. That's just good. There's tension all the way around when you get pulled over. Well, and fear um, breeds hate. Correct. And it, it affects how you interact with the person. You know, um, I've seen I've seen so many videos of people, cops like trying to speak to people and the cop doesn't understand them as far as like where they're from their their lingo um how to maneuver the conversation accordingly and, and in reverse the, on the other side they're, they're like the police motherfucker like y'all shoot people you see what i'm saying like just right. be scared like i don't want to talk you know and right. so again just creates it just creates problems and i'm not saying every cop's bad i'm I, you know i'm not saying that at all but yeah, of course do you feel like the george floyd instance was racially motivated that individual incident i don't think had mm, see the the problem is i wonder if he would have got treated the same way if he wasn't black that's that's my problem so i don't i don't I don't know because I, I've seen I've seen, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. I've seen white dudes and girls just do some off the wall shit to cops, and right. they doing they doing everything but pull a gun, right? Like, and, and it frustrates me because then on the flip side, I see motherfuckers just sneeze wrong, and all of a sudden, why are you coming up to the car with your gun drawn, bro? I'm like, what the fuck right. you like right. did I murder somebody? Did I shoot somebody? What the fuck are you doing? Right. Like, and it's just, why are you so on edge with me? But then you got motherfuckers who are yelling at y'all, fighting y'all, and y'all doing everything in your power not to shoot them. Right. So I don't think it was racially motivated in a sense where it was, it was he was treated specifically like that because he was Black. But I will say 
the odds of that happening if you were white it's kind of slim if that make if does that make sense though yeah yeah absolutely absolutely i think uh because because again it wasn't like even again, well the cops even, that were there responding to this issue were also mixed in race right they yeah, that the guy is, that had his knee on his neck was a white guy but yeah. everybody else was not white yeah that but that's the that cops aren't white and black they're all blue like come right. on now. <laughs> they're all the 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 10 percent of cops that are out here 20 percent of cops that are out here doing shitty things to people the 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 rest of them ain't gonna say shit about them because they know what time it is you know the cops don't snitch on cops that's just how it is man yeah so i mean i guess i so guess every, does, you so you think that really trumps race say that one more time you really think that blue trumps race in their in their eyes for cops yes hmm. i think i think it's not about it. cops stick together i think i think it depends on the individual right I think maybe in that situation, just well, none of those individuals happen to have. Um, I, I don't I, the gumption, or or even the awareness. I don't think they even were looking at him to see what, whether or not he was breathing. They were just relying I mean, on the guy that had his knee on his neck to. I mean, they didn't give a fuck. Know. I mean, they didn't care. <laughs> like, why would they care? Right, they were just holding him down. The yeah, other guy was just like standing around like it was every day. Exactly. That's that just again, it just but I'm saying like either I don't know. I guess there's a lot of inferences or you know, speculations you can make about it. Um I don't I because I'm so against racism, I'm yeah. never quick to jump to racism unless it's like clear. <laughs> Correct. You know, uh, so it, it is hard to determine whether or not it was specifically racially, racially motivated. Correct. But I will say, I don't believe he would have got treated like that if he wasn't black. Like he would have, if he was white, I highly doubt that would have happened. Also, we probably would have never seen it if he was white. Right. I want to yeah. say, though, from my opinion, on from the perspective of what happened following George Floyd. Mm -hmm. Of, of course, there's a lot of controversy over that, right? Everybody's got these opinions about protesters mm -hmm. versus looters and this and that. I mean, right. I, I think right. the difference between protesters and looters and rioters is pretty fucking clear, right? Um, the, I had this debate. I have this debate a lot at work, actually. Um, and I had to explain to a guy, 99% of people, or I wouldn't say 90, I would say specifically for protests, a majority of people are out there trying to do good, trying to get their voices heard. Yeah. You know, and you're going to have a few people that are there for negative reasons. They're, they're specifically there to either hurt the protest or to hurt, you know, businesses or do whatever. Right. right. But when it comes to loot, when it comes to the looters and stuff, a, a lot of people are just opportunists, man. If you, well, yeah, you, I gotta mean, think, absolutely. you gotta think how many people were unemployed when all that shit was happening too. So right. like all it takes is one person to break a window for a thousand motherfuckers to go in there. Just yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. And, and so I don't to say to like label them all as rioters and looters. Right. It, it, it's not it's not right because I think most people are just opportunists, man. Right. They have a the vast majority of those people were probably just opportunists. They're like, fuck and it. Everybody that, else is about to rush in right. there and the fucking TV about to take food or this or that. Like, I need to go get mine for mine. Right. No, and I definitely not, don't blame them for capitalizing on a moment. I mean, there's not many of us that wouldn't were we in that situation. Correct. And especially I, if we were struggling. People didn't have jobs. People had nothing, you know, they had they had no jobs. Right. They they felt very strongly about things that were happening. And you know, in they my not, opinion. Yeah. I think, <laughs> yo, know, they they tried. People tried to destroy the city center in Hampton, bro. Let me tell you something, <laughs> or whatever the town center, whatever it's called in Hampton. Man, they rolled up there with like fifty Newport News and Hampton police officers. 
I bet they did. And surrounded the whole protest and said, "All oh, y'all better leave now, <laughs> bro." Right. They broke like, one window. Man, I was cr- I was watching on Snapchat. That shit was funny as fuck. Oh, I said, okay. I, I actually I didn't see any of that. I don't remember. I watched the. I, I watched every. I was going from city to city on Snapchat, just just watching everything that was going on, man. I think I was just kind of baffled by all of it. It was every. I couldn't city. even participate from a spectator's position on that stuff <laughs> because from and and this is what I'm getting at from my mm-hmm. my opinion on the George Floyd case because that it really cracked the bottle on everything. That, the, the well, that was the straw that broke the camel's back because you remember before that um, it was a Mod Aubrey. Right and Trayvon yeah. Martin and a whole yeah, bunch. It was of just it just it was a it was a a series of things that led up to that and then that was just it, man. But right, I mean, the, what I mean by crack the bottle is like, I, I think you know what I mean. I, like everything yeah. went wide open. That's when all the rioting and the looting. They yeah. people really wanted to change, and this is what I'm getting at. I absolutely agree that changes need to take place within certain systems. Now, whether I will say right. that there is an overall overarching systemic racism in our country, I really, I don't necessarily believe that. I think that there are more systems within our country that are open and inclusive than there are racially motivated systems. But with that said, I agree that changes needed to take place, especially with regard to police reform. Um, I think that the rioting should have stopped with the burning of the Minneapolis PD. Mm. See, that there are people that disagree with me on this too. They're like, no, there shouldn't have been any. Well, from my perspective, I believe in the second amendment. And yeah. I believe that if you feel especially as a people, as many people as were involved in this, and hurt by this and affected by this. I believe if you feel as a people that a change needs to take place and you feel like your fucking government isn't listening, then yes, you have every right to fucking stand up and fucking burn something down and be like, bitch, look at us and fucking listen to us. You're mm-hmm. going to hear us now. God damn it. You know what I like? I feel that. But I think when they burned the PD, for me, they got the message. Mm -hmm. You know what I like? That was a huge move to take over the PD and burn it down. That went viral all on its own and then led to a whole bunch of other shit that really wasn't necessary. If they would have just burned down the PD and then from that moment on had silent protests or not not silent but you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. at least a more martin luther king-esque style to their protest right Mm -hmm. something where we're showing you like we're gonna fucking stand here or like rosa parks we're gonna fucking sit here until you fucking acknowledge that a change needs to be made and we're gonna watch this pd burn you know that like i I get it but that's it should have stop there because then I think there could have been a more resounding move for change whereas oh. now there's so much opposition to that change that's been created because of the rioting mm-hmm. and because of the whole uprising of this white privilege notion and stuff like all of this has come to light since the George Floyd incident. I never heard mm-hmm. the term white privilege before George Floyd and before all this stuff started popping off. Maybe I was naive to the term white privilege. Is that a real thing that I didn't know about? Was no, it? it's been around for a long time. Man. Has it? Okay. Yeah. Well, forgive me. No, you're good. You know, not you personally, but just people. <laughs> you know, uh, of course you forgive me, <laughs> but... And, and this is my point, you know, white people are naive to a lot of black issues and vice versa. Not, you know, mm. black people will look at it. And I've heard this before that say that like white people don't have issues and shit. Like, you know, we've got issues too, not the same ones, you know, mm. but there are definitely still poor white people living here in America. There are still people here that are white that live in 
poor areas that feel disenfranchised and feel left to rot. You know, how do you think they feel in West Virginia sometimes? <laughs> There's a, there are places in our in our country that go left unchecked that are full of white people too, you know, and, and unregarded. Um, you know, coal miner communities and things like that, like people write that shit off and but we don't know shit about it, you know? I don't know mm -hmm. anything about a coal miner's struggles. <laughs> Not the black the black lungs. Well, that, you know, I know that they risk their life to get us coal for everything. Yeah. You know? And I but regardless we we can't know what we don't know. That's all I'm saying. You know, so no, 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 not no, knowing no. that white privilege was a was an already correct named thing, you know. Uh but anyway, and and clearly that brings us into the topic of white privilege. So I'll just give my opinion on white privilege and then okay. you can kind of um sure. take it from there. So first and foremost, I definitely believe that white privilege is a thing, but when I first heard the term white privilege, I was just as opposed to it as anybody else that I've heard opposed to it. Not for the same reasons necessarily, but for my own reasons, being that I've pretty much grown up poor most of the time, even, even after like we lived in Suffolk in that area, which was a pretty nice area, mm -hmm. uh, we ended up moving to another area in uh it was like Burbage Grant in uh Harborview right okay. and then I went to Nansman from there and so in a sense in like a monetary materialistic sense my life got better but then mm -hmm. my parents divorced and separated and we were fucking poor again and I I lost all hope of my future <laughs> like it literally stripped from me in a day like i wanted to go to school to be a rocket scientist and join the air force and all of that got stripped from me in a mm -hmm. in the blink of an eye and i went to being poor again and shit like that you know what i mean like from being poor and having lived in black communities and in that sense when i hear the word privilege i'm like kiss my ass <laughs> right um okay. but i had someone explain to me what mm -hmm. white privilege really is mm -hmm. and from the perspective of i don't get turned down for jobs because my name's shaniqua or mm -hmm. tyrone instead of terrence or something like you know yeah like I, I never got that. You know what I mean? I, I, mm -hmm. I didn't understand that until someone explained it to me. And then I was like, okay, I get yeah. it. You yeah. know what I mean? There, there are instances in our lives, like when I go to the store, people aren't fucking staring me down like a hawk thinking I'm mm -hmm. about to steal something just because I'm wearing a right. hoodie or whatever. Um, right. So from that perspective, I think everyone needs to understand that white privilege is a real thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but the problem is the way it's said. Right. Correct. And that's privilege. That's, that's, privilege immediately puts our backs up, especially correct. those of us who have not witnessed any fucking privileges in our life. Right. <laughs> like, correct. but I don't witness the privilege of what white privilege is because correct. I don't deal with the disadvantages right that's what white privilege is i don't i don't see any of the disadvantages because i'm white like i don't get treated the way that i just described i don't get looked over for jobs because i don't have a name that's not you know that doesn't conform with normal names or whatever you know however you want to define that but uh so anyway, yeah, so the word privilege just no, put my back up too until I understood it. Yeah, that's exactly um, that's exactly the issue. See, people people think just white privilege is like, oh, 
Um, I'm going to get a, a, a they, they think because they, they have experienced negative things in their life. They're not privileged because people associate privilege with like money or some type right. of high status. But just like you said, they're, they're forgetting the nuances like, oh, well, like for me, I'm like, let me put my hoodie down when I go in the store, just, you know, just to make these motherfuckers feel a little bit more comfortable. Right. Or maybe talking to the cops or maybe when I'm talking to certain people, maybe I, I'll, I might say things a certain way that normally I wouldn't say. Like I might, you know, switch up my, my tone a little bit. But or it's okay. let like me that. let me pause you there for just a second because as a black person, when you mm -hmm. go into a store, whether mm -hmm. that store owner is white, black, Asian, mm -hmm. Middle Eastern, you're automatically stereotyped by that person. Yes. Right. Usually. Yes. So, but that's, and then, and that's pretty much regardless of race. It's just black people aren't trusted. Correct. And so in that regard, you know, that, that, that is an example that gets brought up a lot in terms of white privilege. Mm -hmm. And I, even I just brought it up and that, but now that I'm actually thinking about it, it's like, unfortunately, it's not just a white privilege issue. This is a black disadvantage issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. At, at least in the store context. Correct. Not necessarily in the getting a job context, but I mean the same, it, you know, in that regard, it's not just black people that get a bad rep. It's it's Middle Eastern people and mm -hmm. uh, some Asian people. You know, I don't want to hire Lee Ho Chun. I'm going to hire Aaron, Josh, <laughs> you know, it, mm -hmm. so you know, I, I'm not trying to necessarily tear apart the white privilege mm -hmm. thing, but I, I'm just, I'm trying to think of it logically, right? So, well, there, 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 there has to be two sides. So you can't say that black people are, are treated unfairly and not have a recipient on the other side of that. Does that make sense? Right. Right. There, there has to be one there has to be both like so if if someone's getting treated badly systemically then clearly someone's getting treated much better <laughs> and, but and, would and it not true. be better phrased as black disadvantage than white privilege um, I never that, that. that's kind think. of that's I, that i haven't thought about well, it either that's, that's literally where my mind just took me and it's like no, you're good. it is unfortunately you know, in, in a lot of like in the in this in the career sense or in the job sense, that is like a white privilege thing. Well, well, it's not though because it depends who the hi who's doing the hiring, right? Whether it's a white person or a Middle Eastern person, they're gonna judge each demographic or each name that they need based on a certain. You know, they're gonna place that name in a demographic and whether they like it or not. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you're talking about white owned companies. Which I think is the issue, right? But white, the, right. white is white, or when I say white, I mean white people have always been the, uh, up until recently, have always been the, mm, how do I word this? Have always been the epitome of like the American figure. Even when it came to beauty, they had, you know, they had black people straightening their fucking hair, you know, um, it's always been white. So, Everyone had to conform to what what was white, like what was what was acceptable, what was you know we had to conform. Right. Um, so I don't. So so what I'm getting at is even though it was a an Arab or whoever, it, when you're still looking at a white person's name versus anybody else's name, it's just like, you see what I'm saying? I mean, in a sense, I guess it is uh, overall. <laughs> white people that created that distrust for black people correct <laughs> like by have first you enslaving them and then by or segregating them and then you know it's just like one small step at a time rather than just full-on inclusivity correct you know blacks have been forced into their own neighborhoods and their own cultures and this and that yeah. you know that 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 division was created by the lack of inclusivity 
Correct. And okay. then from white people. Right. Have you ever seen a movie? Have you ever seen a movie called uh, Birth of a Nation? It's an Birth old of a nation. No. Super old. It's like it's like a movie where um like the the clan is hailed as a hero of the movie because they protect this white woman from from like this this black dude who's in, is this white guy in blackface and he's doing all these fucking super I don't even, I don't even know how to describe it like like they bad have, representations of black people it's terrible and at one point like this lady chunks chunks herself off a cliff instead of fucking being ravaged by this black dude she just commits suicide and just takes a nosedive off the fucking cliff like the movie is wild it's one of the I, I almost want to say it's the first motion picture movie. I, I, I don't quote. I might have to look it up. For, I'm pretty sure it's one of the first ones in the U.S. Um, hmm. But from so from it's the old, very, old. yeah, oh, it's super old, super old. There's no there's no um, voices or anything. It's just like well, I mean, old. clearly it's super old because it actually includes a white guy in blackface, and it's like purely yeah. racist as fuck. Oh yeah, it's but but what I'm getting must at be is, super old to be. Well, to people who didn't know, the people who, let's say there's people who didn't experience, you know, or been around a whole bunch of black people and they see this movie, it's just like, right. It's just further stereotyping or, you know, the smear paint, the, the, the smear campaign when they made marijuana illegal, they used black people. Right. They used black people. Like, in, in right, movie. right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They did. Yeah. And it's just like, why? Like, so, from the very beginning they like used every- black people to see and that that might have been a big part of it that might have been a giant part of what we're talking about here about how i mean at least as far as like our modern culture is concerned mm-hmm. right like the post or near the desegregation era the civil rights mm-hmm. era like of course, blacks were already looked down upon is what I was getting at, but to use that to further vilify them, you've now turned them from once victims, now free into villains. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm getting at. Maybe that that was a big part of the transition into blacks being viewed as villains. Correct. Mm. Correct. and I mean, I, I can go on all day about this. Um, sure. You had a you had a whole generation or two that got locked up. They, you know, you, you flood the streets with crack, and you know, you already take a group of people who are are poor and struggling, and you the men they you close down all these factories and shit, and the men have two choices: you're either gonna sell it or you're gonna smoke it. Right, it, right. Well, that so, was. Uh... That was a whole movement on its own, right? Correct. During Absolutely. the Nixon era. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm glad you know that. Absolutely. And huh. the only reason I know that is because I watch a lot of Joe Rogan. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And people he talks about these things a lot. Yeah, and it's people who are oblivious. People who have no clue that this even happened, but they wonder why the cities are the way they are now. They wonder why, like, all you have to do is look, just do a little bit of research. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. And so you had you had a couple generations. Well, I won't who, say it makes sense, <laughs> but I understand it's there in the history. <laughs> um, makes sense on how things end up playing out. Right, um, right. And like even my family, right? I I look at some of my uncles, um, and you know, all of them on drugs, you know, in and out of jail their whole lot, whole lives. And it, it really, it really hurt the black community, you know, private, private prisons, you know, right. like the, you know, prison industrial complex. Right. You would think the only people that commit crimes in this country are black. You would record the people that, in prison. That's a whole <laughs> nother thing that I definitely think we should save for another time to okay, unpack I it. Could, right? I, could on, I could go on all day about this shit. Yeah. And, so all that, and what I'm getting at is every, like, all the things I just mentioned and more all feed into the, the, the white privilege and, and blacks being under, um, underprivileged heavily and, right. and dis, 
disadvantaged. <laughs> I like that disadvantaged, you know, you, you, you're starting. I was raised, you know, my parents always used to tell me like being black, being a black male in America is the hardest goddamn job. <laughs> like, you got right. You got to overcome a lot, man. You got to overcome a lot, fight through a lot. Um, you got to work twice as hard, be twice as smart. Um, and that's one thing I always, that always stuck with me that my parents taught me. You Do know? you agree with uh, white guilt? What do you feel mean, like, do I do I do you, I, do you I, feel I, like whites should feel guilty? No. I think people just need to understand mm. and acknowledge. I don't think because at, at the end of the day, like let's say you have someone who never did anything racist, they're not racist. You know, why why then should that person feel guilty? They 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 didn't play an, an actual part. Well, that's exactly my angle on this. In yeah. that I I personally don't feel guilty. I feel bad, right? right. I feel I mean, bad a, for the feel. shit that, that has happened to black people throughout our history. Absolutely. Yeah. And I feel empathy for that. But I don't feel guilty because as I've just explained, yes, I I did call a kid a name one time. You know, I've I've been guilty of my own transgressions and i feel guilt for those moments but mm -hmm. i as an overall arcing thing i like you were just saying i wasn't directly responsible for slavery i don't even know that any of my family extended right. to my ancestors was directly responsible for owning slaves or any of that um so in that sense, you know, I don't feel guilty for being white because I've never felt proud of being white either. Okay. You know what I mean, I've yeah. never woken up like, fucking thank God I'm white today and fuck everybody else because they're below me because I'm white. I've never felt that way. Mm -hmm. I've never felt a single ounce of white pride. Mm -hmm you know and even even learning about what white pride that white pride was a thing was a fucking blow to me like a shock to me <laughs> like really this is this is, you know it, it, i have another kind of anecdotal thing that i don't even know if it ties into this but i, I thought about it the other day as it pertains to this show when i was in when i was at jfk uh we were learning about the Civil War. And I remember I understood what slavery was. I knew it to be bad. I knew how the war ended, obviously, because Black people were free and in my class and all around me. Mm -hmm. um, but I found myself, as we were learning about it, I found myself rooting for the South. Not because I wanted <laughs> slavery to be real or whatever, <laughs> nothing like that. but because I was from Virginia. That was my sole basis. It was like, oh, Virginia's in the South. I want the South to win. And that was it. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, Virginia loses, but slaves were free. Okay, that that's fine with me too, right. It, it just, it was a weird thing. I remember distinctly thinking that while learning the subject, you know, oh, I hope the South wins because Virginia's in the South. It's just the naive things that, you know, kids think, I yeah. guess. <laughs> But um, anyway, I've, I've never felt a single ounce of white pride, so I don't feel any white guilt, right? I, like you said, I think it's important that we understand what it is that our fellow Black people are going through. Correct. You know? and, and when and where we can to enable change mm -hmm. that provides for equality of opportunity mm -hmm. right yeah. um as far as like reparations or something like that in like a a large payout sense or you know i don't know that money is gonna solve the problem i mean for a lot of people it would right but i think that we could gain a lot more ground on the fight for equality of opportunity an education mm. reform of education mm -hmm. to fit people's needs and strengths 
you know what I mean? So, so that there was more opportunity for people with more education, you know, then it comes down to communities coming together around the idea that education is going to make the situation better. Mm -hmm. And that's education across the board, black history, all of this, like we take all of this in, un, into understanding and we use it to move forward in our society, mm -hmm. right? We, we have to learn from it, but we don't, we can't, we can't live in it or we're never going to progress, right? If you were traumatized as a child mm -hmm. or at any point, really, like you can't, dwell in that moment because it's not going to get better i've seen that with my own eyes as far as trauma is concerned and even experienced some of that for myself until i wised up to to kind of be able to overcome my own trauma right mm -hmm. um but I, yeah i just i think that overall we would gain more ground if we were fighting for like equality of opportunity and better education and certain other better things you know like better quality of life you know water in flint michigan and and elsewhere apparently like the lead thing is fucking terrible all over america and anybody only ever talks about flint michigan and that's not even fixed yet and we found out about this four years ago you know, we as a people have to come together to change these things. And if we keep feeding into the polarization of all this shit, we're never going to make these changes. And I mm -hmm. think that's what you were saying earlier about our kids too. You know, mm -hmm. we don't want kids to grow up in this, this racially feuding world. Right. Fuck that shit, man. <laughs> really. Like we need to come together and we need to provide better education for our kids, you know, and a, and a better understanding of what equality really is, of what all people are created equal means, mm -hmm. you know, it, anyway, I think I've exhausted my opinion on white privilege, but, uh, I mean, do you have anything to add on that topic before we roll it over? Um, no, I think we uh, I think we covered it pretty, pretty extensively. I think that we were in a moment, and I I was going to use it as a segue, so I'll kind of bring it back for a moment. Yeah. We, we were discussing uh the Nixon era and just in general holding black people down and that kind of can segue us to the topic of the n-word that we wanted to discuss oh, yeah and yeah. uh before we get into it into it i'm gonna ask you and i you know i respect whatever it is that you say mm -hmm. with regard to this but in the context of this conversation does it bother you if i use either iteration yes. of the word <laughs> yeah. yes yeah, like I don't, I don't, I don't, nah, I don't want to hear it, man. Okay, that's fine. And and I, I, I expected a lot of people would feel that way. You know what um, I mean? And, and so I really figured it's down to you and how you feel. And you can say your piece on it. Go for so, it. So this is another topic that I have with, you know, people a lot actually, because I'm one of the, you know, I don't, I don't say it, man. Right. And I am pretty adamant about people not saying it around me. Um, right. Well, uh, non-black people saying it around me. And um, I have my own personal reasons why I, I, don't, I don't. That that word carries a lot of weight, you know. And with me personally, I just can't. I don't know. I, I just, I just can't say it, man. Right. Um, but I understand, you know, my my community, my people's viewpoint on it, and how they've taken it and 
you know, change the meaning of it. That's that's a that's in in itself a powerful thing, that you know you can take something that was once used to be the most derogatory thing you could say. Um, I mean, even still is. Even still is, and to say that you took that and amongst each other made it the least bit derogatory. Like right. I, I can understand and I respect that. Just my personal opinion, I, I don't say it. And um, any non-Black person around me that does say it, it usually isn't around me very long. Right. Uh, now, this, and, compli- this conversation is going to get really complicated since I have to kind of walk on eggshells around the word. Um, but I used to be a proponent of saying it at will, but only in a proper context, right? So okay. if I said the ER version, mm-hmm. I wasn't aiming it just at Black people. I would say it to people who were acting ignorant, okay. right? Mm-hmm. Um, I never used that word ever in my life in a racial context, but I do understand why it's the epitome of the worst word of all words, right? I get it. Um, But I also felt like times are changing, right? And like you said, in in a way that Black people have evolved the word into being something that's not as derogatory. They can use it amongst each other to call each other brother. You know, um, I... I don't I don't really know why I adopted that philosophy that like I could just use it in that context. Um, but a friend of mine, a black friend of mine named Steven, uh, if he watches this, he knows who he is. We played league together and uh, league every fucking day. League. Wait, Lee, you play league still. You don't see this. Hold up. Zoom in. Who is that? <laughs> oh, that's Katarina. That's the whole. All right. Whole All right. So you, so you play league and haven't played with me. Okay. All right. Cool. Dude, what? We have played together. I think you said you play every day. I haven't seen you on. No, no, no. We used to play together. Oh, I, I understand. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I haven't played league in well over a year now. Maybe I'm more. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. We used to play league together every day. And and I even, we transitioned to another game together for a while. But anyway, we were together one day and we had been friends for a long time. And that word had never come out of my mouth. (laughs) And so it had never been an issue up to this point. We were in a lobby and we were transitioning from the lobby into the game. And somebody did some shitty shit and I called him the ER version of that word. Now, clearly I don't know his race, right? So it wasn't a racially motivated thing at all. I was just saying that what he did was fucked up. And Steven took real personal offense to that as you would clearly, right? And and he checked me on that shit. That at first he was so mad, he wasn't even gonna check me on it. He was just gonna fucking not talk to me. And we had mm-hmm. been friends for a long time already, like well over a year and playing together nearly every day. Like that makes you pretty fucking close friends. Yeah. Um, but-, but he used it as a moment to teach me why no one should ever say it. Mm-hmm. Right. And this is such a very strange, like loaded topic. So I agreed with him that day and I I don't remember all of exactly what he said to me. I remember him talking to me about, you know, I, and I understood a lot of what he said to me already. Right. Like, but whatever it was, he made it resoundingly clear to me that he doesn't use it and I'm definitely not to use it. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, 
I've never used any of it unless having a conversation like this, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, however, uh, I'll tell an anecdote that I have, and then I'll we'll we'll proceed to discuss this. So. You know the YG song, My N-Word, mm -hmm. right? I fucking love that song. It's a good right? song. That song came out when uh, a dealer friend of mine and me were, like, super cool, and that was our song, and he, you know, like, it just, I love that fucking song, man. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't take that away from me, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so... And you know what? YG put that shit out to the public. You know what I mean? It's just a it's a byproduct of rap music that 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 narrative or whatever that song is in the public. And and so th this will bring us into how it all ties into music and stuff. But I was riding in the car, listening to that song by myself, bumping the fuck out of it because I love the song and I, I hadn't heard it in a while. And so I just fucking turn that shit up. And this <clears throat> black woman pulls up next to me in an SUV and she mm -hmm. starts fucking slamming her horn at me. And she's like, fuck you, fuck this. You know, what the fuck is wrong with you? That kind of shit. You're, you're I don't know what she was saying. She was going off too. in her car. <laughs> and, but she clearly knew what song, I mean, she heard the song from inside my car. Um, yeah. And it made me really think, like, here I am sitting by myself in my car, a white man, enjoying black culture and immersed in it because I was fucking, <laughs> I was riding. I listened know. to YG. <laughs> so I was in my zone. Mm -hmm. And then she comes out of fucking nowhere, like, fuck you for saying that shit or whatever. Like, well, I don't know exactly what she was saying, and I wish I did. You know, but clearly angry at me for being white and singing this song. Mm -hmm. And I actually posted this on Facebook, like just after it happened. I don't know if you remember, but who's really racist in this situation, right? Who it, who has the fucked up perspective here that this is a song that's literally on the mainstream radio? Like, yes, yeah. it's blurted out. But I was listening to the explicit version, but like literally a mainstream song and I'm not allowed to enjoy it just because I'm white. Like, yeah. am I really supposed to sit there like my, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I saw another video and I, I'll, I'll let us get into it after this. But I saw another video of a Hobson concert where the uh, fucking white dude gets up on stage. Hobson constantly brings people up on stage to sing a verse and shit. He says yeah, the yeah. N-word in a lot of his songs. And in this instance, this white dude's rapping the verse, says the N-word, and the whole crowd's like, no, no, no. It's like, it's in the fucking song. He wasn't calling anybody that. He's not, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there has to be... Uh, I, I don't like to advocate for saying it, but in this, in this sense, like you have to pay attention to the context and the intent of the word. You know what I, in, in my opinion, like I'm not running around using it for obvious reasons, but if I'm singing it in a song or I'm speaking about the song, I can't even say the name of the song to you, Terrence. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. As my friend. Um, <laughs> like and and it's, a, it's the saying. name of the song. Um, it's it's a case by case basis, man. I'm I I just I mean the answer to that question would be no. <laughs> like I know what song it is. You didn't, I, you can just say the why. You know I I knew what song it was without you saying it. Of course. Like um, but, but I literally I can't even say the name of the song without offending. The, the thing you. is. The thing is, a lot of people feel like there was so much that was that was taken, like we 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 had our culture stripped, right? We essentially had to, to, to make our another whole culture. We don't have we don't know where we're from, we right. don't know 
what part of fucking West Africa are we from? You know, right. um, so we have no history in that sense. Um, and then that that's the only thing a lot of people feel like is is our shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I get it. I mean, that's I mean, that's that's the argument. Um, it doesn't so, sound like a sound argument to me. I mean, I'm not I'm not um, again, I'm not advocating for saying it. I'm respecting you by not saying it, but that's because I respect people, you know, like not that I would say it if I disrespected somebody. I just mm -hmm. I don't know. Again, I would say it if you would allow it only in the context that we're actually having a conversation about it. That's what yeah, I'm saying. And 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 to and to be honest, like the the there's a lot of other you know races that that use their 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 slur as a term of endearment like that's 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 actually kind of common um the only difference is none of them were used in our country i will say to the magnitude that the n-word was right to that right. extent but and every for sure but words it, evolve all the time as you just explained like even for the a version of that word right uh -huh. There is my brother, right? Then mm -hmm. there is there there is the brother version of that word. Mm -hmm. Then there is the like you're fucked up version of that word, like from a black guy to a black guy, mm -hmm. right? Like I've heard black guys call other black guys that word in a derogatory context. Yeah, that's not common though. That's not common. I mean, it's pretty common enough that I've heard it. I've heard it more than once. Wait, 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 wait. When you say derogatory, are you talking about the hard ER? No, no. I'm talking about oh, the okay. version. Oh. oh, then yeah. That's this is what I'm saying. It's hard for oh, us yeah. to have this conversation if I yeah. can't say the word because I can't no, even I, give yeah. you a proper context for it. But no, you're I, right. I even heard it today. Like, no, you're right. No, no, no. You're right. That did, did correct. You're, you're you're right. It's used both ways in by by us, yeah. Right. So that and that's all I'm getting at with like it does come down to context and intent. Like if someone, even someone of your own race, or especially in this case, someone of your own race calls you the A version, but they mean the fucking like you're a motherfucker when they call you that. You know what I mean? Like when they're saying fucking this is what i'm saying i can't i can't it's hard to walk on eggshells with this shit but when they call you that you're saying, you're saying sense and it's like they're saying the you're difference? a motherfucker i got you you're saying what's the difference between someone saying the 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 derogatory a version and the the hard er version essentially if they're both used derogatory well they're the both they're not both used derogatorily my point my point was about the evolution of words right but uh -huh. that that word, the ER version is the bad version, right? We all know that that like it doesn't matter what context you put that in, really. Like it's just fucking rude and racist and shitty. I mean, even the, even the, if you're trying to placate that, like I said earlier, you know, you're using it based on the actual definition of the word bullshit. It, mm -hmm. It's just a fucked up word to use. But when right. it comes to the A version. There is the version that is in the mainstream media that that is like my brother, you know, uh, that's mm -hmm. just a replacement word for bro or brother or whatever. And then there is still the negative connotation version of it that is used in a derogatory sense. So again, you know, for me, it just comes down to context and intent. You know, if, if we're having a conversation, and I told you, I, I had this conversation the other day with three black guys, and not one of them was like, don't fucking say that word. And if mm -hmm. they would have, I would have shut the fuck up and been like, dude, my bad. You know what I mean? I would have felt terrible. But we were having an open, honest conversation. And in the context of a conversation, they gave me that. No, I, yeah, but, I, I get it. Yeah. Um, when it is so prevalent in the mainstream and 
I, I will liken it to this as well. I'm sure you know and you've noticed because you're a gamer. In the gaming community, white people use that shit like it's water. <laughs> like the fact don't give a fuck and nobody's nobody's saying shit because they're it's using it in a proper context they're not I mean, being derogatory there's nothing you can do what are you gonna do leave the leave the call of duty match leave like i if, mean if you definitely gonna... can and i've definitely heard moments where people have said shit but i'm saying as a generalization nobody seems to be bothered by it mm. And not, and not nobody. They're, you know, they're bothered because the thing is, they know that that person more often than not won't say that shit if they were around a black person. That's the thing. Right. Like, I mean, uh, people say shit online all the time they wouldn't say around the motherfucker they're saying it to. And you know that for a fact. Right. And see, I've been in different groups of black friends where mm -hmm. I've been allowed to say it because they understand I don't mean anything by it and they call me that and you know what I mean like like I said me and that friend of mine like that was our song he used mm -hmm. to call me that I used to call him that there was no there's no derogatory there and I, I'm not I mean that's a lot of people do that I just I've never been like that man right ever. right like I just I mean and I, 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 I respect that yeah and that's not saying it's it's um anything to do with the the friend that's trying to say it not it has nothing to do with them actually it's just that's just not how i get down man um right. and so like you said i mean i but see that's think it's also, better taken on a case by case basis right correct i mean if depending you're on the group people, depending yeah, on the if you're around some people that let hey i don't hey teach their own man that's just not how terry got down did you um, say seize the moment? No, no, no. I, I said if you're if you're around a group of people that lets you get down like that, then do you like? Oh, you know, right. I thought you were like if you're around a bunch of people that let you do that, that and seize the moment. I'm like, it's not like that. <laughs> I, mean, my, I mean, that that's between them. That's y'all relationship. You know, right, right. I'm right. not you any differently. If so, um, so you're not a proponent that well, like you've said that you don't say it at all do you think that nobody should use it at all because mm. that that that's the next question right because you've just you've just made an argument against yourself that like, no, no, no. you don't say it at all but right. it is a sure. part of your culture and um, you accept it as part of your culture and the the, the thing is I, I go back to what i said in the very beginning it's i struggle with the the history part of it um because i don't I struggle with the history part of it, you know, regardless if you take the the hard ER off of it and put an A, right, like, right. You know what I'm saying? like that, that word still derived from some very, 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 very negative shit. Right. And that's the reason why I don't say, it. um, I just kind of give a pass to my people. That's all. I, I mean, I guess, I guess my answer would have to be, I, I really would wish no one would say it. Do you feel like, and I'm not calling you one, I'm I'm purely asking, mm. do you feel like that makes you a hypocrite in a sense? Mm. I guess, I guess from a particular point of view, yeah, you, you can say that. That's, that's an accurate statement. So if you had it your way, would you just prefer it be wiped off the map? Yeah. Let that shit die. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I respect that. I actually, I was listening to a podcast when I ran out to get cigarettes. Um, mm -hmm. This guy was talking about uh, rap's influence on young minds. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, it, if you ever wanted to do away with it, like, that's the place to start, right? Because, like, mm -hmm. I'm saying... I grew up on black culture. Like that word is not a foreign word to me. My right. wife constantly worried so, our three-year-old son is going to pick up that word because I listen to music that's got that word all over it. Mm -hmm. you know, they, I mean, he's worried they, they, that we're going to catch some shit because he's going to say it somewhere and we don't even know so, if he picked it up yet. You I, know? Yeah, I don't know. I have a story about that, actually. 
I, okay. I got to start. So I picked my son up from daycare one day. He had to be like three. And the lady hands me a little notice. She said, well, you know, your son was saying the N-word. I was like, well, where the fuck did he hear it from? It's like a church, you know, church daycare or whatever. She's like, well, he was, I was like, well, how was he using it? And then she, she told me the context he was using it in. And I was like, I said, well, ma'am, you know, I don't use that word in my house. And my, my child's mother for damn sure don't use that word in the house. Like my mother don't talk like that. Like where the fuck am I, you know, I'm not cursing, but I'm like, where, you know, she goes, well, I don't know. But like the way she was looking at me, she was looking at me like, bitch, I know you use that word. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like she was looking at me all sorts of kind of crazy. Like, like, I, like I'm lying. Like, like you ain't here talking, but bitch, we know you use the word type shit. Right, right, right. So I get my son right because I'm I'm pissed. So I get my son, and my son doesn't lie. Like he told me straight. He's like, nah. He said, he said, no. Nah. Oh, you know, he told me the kid. He said such and such was saying it. And I was, and then so you know, he told me, and it actually happened twice. And I had told the school, I was like, look, me and me and my child's mother had to go up there to the daycare or whatever. And was like, look, my son, we don't talk like that in my house. Like, I, I, I just say, you know, but what, what, what it was is this other three-year-old had a bunch of older brothers. Mm. And the older brothers, when they would all play, that's how they would talk. Right. So the three-year-old picked up on that. Then he came to daycare. Now my son's using that word. In, in the appropriate context. Right. And, you know, like he, like, and so, and, and it even came out, me and him were like play fighting one day when he was young and it came out. And I'm just like, what'd you say? And he said it again. I was like, and we had to sit him, we had to sit him down. Like, nah, that's not, you know. Right. And so we haven't had we haven't had an issue since then. You know, um, my son, my son's not s- slow. He knows that's a bad word. And he knows right. he should be saying it until he can give me a good reason why he should say it, if that makes right. sense. Right, right. But that's what I'm so, saying. And, and from your perspective, can he give you a good reason why he should say if, it? If, if, I mean, I'm not going to if if he chooses to say it, I might not agree with it. But I mean, if he I, the answer to your question, no, he's probably not going to have a good enough reason why he could tell me that. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. say, that's, but, all he said. that's all I was getting at about. like yeah, being but, different. <laughs> but, but I mean, if 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 I mean, he's going to be his own man one day. That's the decision he makes. I mean, most of my most of my little cousins, you know, when they're not around family and stuff, they kind of, you know, talk a little loose and reckless. Right. You know. Um, but it's never been think, you. Think, nah, man. I, well, like, see, I curse You a lot. get that from your dad, right? Correct. I curse a lot. I, I never really knew your dad or your mom. Mm-hmm. I never got to know them. I never really had any... I don't think I had a single conversation in all the time I went to your house. I don't think I had a single conversation with either your dad or your mom and <laughs> not for lack of want, No, you're good. you yeah, know, yeah. uh, how it played out. Just, they didn't interact with me and mm-hmm. I don't know if that had any kind of race or racial <laughs> anything behind it at all, but not really. No, maybe just because no. I was a kid. You know, yeah. and they were they, so they, much older, right? They, you have older parents. Correct. They, um, I mean, they always interrogated me on who, you know, I couldn't bring no one over without giving the thorough rundown of who the fuck they were, all this other shit. Right. Uh, I had to give, you know, I got interrogated about anybody that stepped in that day. So I got house. the pass enough to, to come over yeah. and, and to I, stay the and night a couple times. Correct. And my parents knew I wasn't a bad kid. You right. Know, I, have a lot of people coming over to the house you know so the person that did come over to the house you know it's just it wasn't something that would have been an issue just because i wasn't a bad i wasn't a bad kid right um you know few friends i didn't go out a whole lot i remember i used to ask my mom to take me to the the magic tournaments on the weekend and i asked her when i got older i said how come you know you took me all the way to Chesapeake to go play in these tournaments and then picked me up at like 11, 12 o'clock at night and stuff. She was like, because there was way worse things you could have been doing than playing magic with a bunch of grown men in a comic right. shop. And I was right. like, damn, that's some real parental shit right there. <laughs> 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 and like, and I always wonder why she didn't care. She never complained. She just asked me, let her know when to pick me up. Like, she, you know, right. You know, that's, I was like, damn, I wasn't a bad kid. So they didn't, they didn't really question the stuff that I did. Right. Did uh, 
did that instance with my mom and like me telling you that do you know did that affect you coming to my house because i feel like we definitely spent more time at your house than my house like now that i'm reflecting on it maybe you decided you didn't want to come around so much and I just kind of invited myself over your way. Like we lived in the same neighborhood, so it wasn't. You're fine. I don't know. Not that I can remember, but then, you know, this, my train of thought then could have been, you know, I don't know, honestly. And I can't remember exactly why it played out like that. I know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe because I had all the video games and shit. I don't fucking know. But we didn't really play we video games. Correct. We just we played, played Magic. Played <laughs> that's yeah. what I'm saying. So I don't know, man. And I mean, then that's what I'm thinking. Like, I always liked my own room. I mostly had most of my friends over to my house instead of going to yeah. their houses. But I did like going to your house because you had your own separate room to your bedroom that was your own room where we could just sit and chill and play and be downstairs and it was well lit and you know just yeah I enjoyed the atmosphere of it but yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, remember I don't, if there was I'm honest with you man I wish I did hmm I mean I could either way been, I mean it's I really don't know it's irrelevant now it was just a thought that just crossed my mind now that I was reflecting <laughs> on it so uh shit man I think that pretty much wraps up everything we were going to talk about um up, man. you said you wanted to discuss music was there anything N no not really i just you know i'm all I'm sure it wasn't what i just brought up with regards to music <laughs> so <laughs> um i um, definitely want to have you on at some point to talk about underground rap and you know yeah how we got into that scene and all of that, like we'll unpack that stuff all, at, all in another episode. But I think we've pushed this one quite long enough. Yeah, man. You know what our time is because there's no actual time stamp recording. Uh, I checked my clock. It, it's it gotta be pushing two hours. It's getting close. And I don't want to run much over that because people are going to yeah. lose their attention spans. Mm. Um, Break it up into segments. <clears throat> and and also, I'm not trying to compete with three-hour podcasts like Joe Rogan, right? I don't want somebody to have to replace three hours of Joe Rogan with three hours of a guy they don't fucking know, <laughs> right? Because yeah, you can I'm always put part one, part two. Joe Rogan over any other three-hour podcast that I don't know, yeah. right? Yeah, definitely. But uh, but, yeah, man, anytime, anytime, just like anytime, man, just let me know. Dude, I'm always I appreciate you coming on and and talking all this shit out even though some of it is difficult to talk about I mean that's the whole point right is that we still yeah. have the conversation and uh we just got to keep the conversation going and that's not just for us that's that's for this whole society Correct. you know the Correct. whole country and uh I appreciate you respect you I love you bro Fucking 17 years we've been friends now, bro. 17 years. We got kids. We got kids. You're definitely <laughs> one of my oldest friends. You're yeah. not my oldest friend because I got one that I've known since his birth, and he's only <laughs> nine months and a day apart from me. So this, yeah. but uh, definitely one of my oldest friends, and uh, I I'm glad we have something like this that I've that I've stepped out on this platform to yeah. bring us closer together too right because yeah, we don't man. really talk yeah. enough <laughs> you know shit the last time oh, yeah. i saw you was a tech nine, tech nine. <laughs> yeah so and that's that was, been that two drunk. years three <laughs> no no so drunk. it's actually no it's been three years because that's my that's son awesome. had just been born and okay. i really didn't enjoy that concert i, I like brother was there right yeah i brought my yeah, brother with me a drink or whatever yeah yeah and i but i really didn't enjoy that concert as much as i wanted to because i really wanted to be home mm. yeah you and didn't I stay was also night. huh you didn't stay the whole night you left early did i yeah you left early you left early before you played um <laughs> areola and all the chicks took their tops off Oh, wow. You missed that whole thing. Well, 
Yeah. I was married and just had a baby, so I no, wasn't no, too concerned no, no. about that. No, you're good, man. You're good. But I, uh, I, I was really disappointed too that Tech was sharing the whole set with Chris. Like I really always yeah, envisioned kept... that a Tech Nine yeah. concert would be Tech Nine mostly, and yeah. it was really be... him and Chris the whole time. The whole, and like, the whole set. Yeah, you're I right. dig kept, Chris, yeah. but he wasn't yeah. just being a hype man. He was literally involved in every track. fucking song. Right. <laughs> He's a so... track. I actually, I actually, um, as big of a Tech Nine fan I, as as I am, Stevie Stone was the real reason I went to that concert. I remember you telling me that Stevie. I, I, I lost my shit when Stevie Stone came on, man. Yeah, I remember, bro. I, now, honestly, I really loved him, and I've heard a lot of Stevie Stone since then. Yeah. And fucking love everything. That, yeah. uh... God, what is that partying song? By Stevie Stone? Yeah. Um... It's in my mind now. Um... I can't remember. Anyway... Neither here nor there. We'll bring it up in a future episode. Um, for anybody that's watched up to this point, I appreciate you. And uh, any amount of support that you can give me, my friend, and the future of this whole endeavor, you know, is going to be great. Uh, I'm going to have a Patreon coming out pretty soon for anybody who really wants to support. Um, I've already created a Twitter and an Instagram. I just need to link all these accounts and do all the things that need to be done. I'm still going to be posting the podcast on multiple platforms, not just YouTube, but for now I'm on YouTube because it was simpler and I was tired of making excuses not to do it. So I'm doing all these things step by step. Um, <laughs> please like subscribe and most importantly share, you know, without sharing, we can't get this conversation and this message out to the world. And uh, yeah, thanks Terrence. Appreciate nope. you, bro. Anytime, homie. All right.